idea knows what this is. Colloquially, I've heard this, this, and even this referred to as isometric. I guess that's what it means. I mean, that's how language works, right? But if you want to render the kind of isometric projections that fit on this grid, where these are 60 degrees and these are 120 degrees, <sighs> move the camera to 1 minus 1, 1. Add an empty at world origin. Select the camera, set it to orthographic. Add a track to constraint pointing at the empty. 2 is minus Z, up is Y, and tick target Z. You can now parent the camera to the empty, and then you can move around and rotate the empty to move around and rotate the camera. Nice, but that isn't even an oblique projection. So, what's an oblique projection? These are oblique projections. It means you can't just point the orthographic camera in the right direction and get one. You see, these are squares. If we point our orthographic camera so that one side of the cube appears to be a square on the screen, then we can't see any of the other sides. So how do we get them? Well, well let's start with the military projection because that is the simplest. <laughs> Move the camera to 1, minus 1, 2. Add an empty at world origin. Select the camera, set it to orthographic. Add a track to constraint pointing at the empty 2 is minus Z, up is Y, and tick target Z. You can now parent the camera to the empty, and then you can move around and rotate the empty to move around and rotate the camera. Now I know what you're saying, that's not a square. Do you think I don't know that? That's why we're going to jump into compositing nodes, and... I'm sure there's some mathematicians out there who can work up some 3D Pythagoras and work out the ratio between these two lengths. But me, I'm just going to put it on the top of a grid and adjust it by eye. And this is what I came up with. Scale X to 0 0.818, scale Y by 1. That's three significant figures and it's good enough for me. So what about cabinet projection? <sighs> Move the camera to 1, minus 2, 1. Add an empty at world origin. Select the camera, set it to orthographic. Add a track to constraint pointing at the empty. 2 is minus Z, up is Y, and tick target Z. You can now parent the camera to the empty and then you can move around and rotate the empty to move around and rotate the camera. Yeah, I know, that's not a square. That's not a square. That's all you ever say, isn't it? Let's just render and save an image. We're gonna create a new scene. In render settings, color management, we're going to set the view transformed to standard so that when we import this image, we're not like re uh, filmicking it, which will make the whites gray. And we don't want that. I went over this in the previous tutorial. Create the camera. Move it to 0, zero 002. No. So that's just two meters in the air. Alt R to remove the rotation, pointing it straight <laughs> downwards. Set it to orthographic. Set the orthographic scale of the camera to 1.6. Add a plane at world origin. Set the dimensions of this plane to 1.6, 0 0.9, 0. This means that it exactly fits the camera. That's assuming you're working on a 16-9 ratio, you know, like 1080p or 4K or like most screens work on this. Go to camera view and let's go into look dev mode. So selecting the plane, new material. Emission, image texture, open, the image you just rendered, tab into edit mode, select edges, select scale and rotate based on individual origins, select the top and bottom edge and rotate by... I'm sure there's some mathematicians out there who can whip out their 3D Pythagoras and work out exactly what this angle is. But me, I'm just going to put it on top of a grid and adjust it by eye. And this is what came, I came up with. R minus 11.8. That's three significant figures and it's good enough for me. I'll tell you what's not good enough for me. This is two renders. I didn't spend all that time creating a way of green screening within material nodes only to have to render twice to get cabinet projection. So let's look at the material on that distorted plane. So we've got a uh, the image going into a mission, going into the material output. But what's going into this vector here? Nothing. And by default, that means that a UV map of this is going into that there. 
Now, so if I were to add a texture coordinate node and slot the UV into vector, absolutely nothing happens because that's what it's doing anyway. So let's see what happens if I slot the UV direct into the emission. So this is what a UV actually looks like. Um, so the red is the X value and the Y is the green value. If you look here, we've got both um, red and green being at zero at the bottom left. And up here it goes to red. So red's gone all the way to one, but green is still at zero. Meanwhile, up here we go from green equals zero to green equals one. And up here we still go from green equals zero to red being one. So that's basically what a UV map does. This is just a slightly skewed screen. If you look at the UV map of a, um, a like a UV map head, for example, you get a very different, very confusing image here. Okay, so I'm going to drag that out of the way. I'm going to add a mix RGB and I'm going to drop it on that line so it connects up like that. Now I'm going to set this to add. I'm going to put, turn the factor up all the way and the color going to RGB, I'm going to go to zero, zero, one. So blue up all the way and the other two down all the way. So what I've done here is I've now basically added blue to all of these. So this is still red going from zero to one and green going through zero to one. The only difference is now blue is completely and utterly on. Then well, I'm just going to check that color management that I've actually set view to transform to standard. If it was on filmic, this wouldn't work as a UV map. And I'm going to render. And I'm going to save this as a PNG and I'm going to set color depth to 16. Why? Well, 8 bit images, you get 256 levels of red, green, and blue. 2 to the power of 8 is 256. And that's about as many as my eyes can see on the screen. And I'm fairly sure it's more than the YouTube is currently showing you. But a UV map. That would only allow us to have an image that's 256 pixels square, which is not really good enough for anything, really. Not just ZX Spectrum screens. Yeah, they're big enough. Instead, we use 16-bit. 2 to the power of 16 is 65,536, which at 300 pixels per inch would allow you to print up to 5.5 meters square, which is big enough for my purposes. If not, 32-bit would be big enough to print which may be more than Blender can handle. So, if we go back to the original screen with its camera at a strange angle, and I'm going to render a frame where I'm just going to jump to the compositor, where I'm going to tick Use Nodes and Backdrop so it's actually having effect, and we can see what we're doing. I'm going to drag that out a bit. I'm going to Shift, right click, drag, add Shift A, output viewer and connect that up and now we can see what I'm doing. I'm going to press V until I've zoomed out. Okay, so there is actually a UV in compositing nodes. It's called, if I go add distort map UV and we drop that there and nothing happens. But if we were to select our input image and we open up our UV map uh, we can drop it into the UV input, which now distorts it into the correct thing. We're actually using the UV map that we just made. Now you might be questioning, why did I have to add the blue on? What's that doing? Now, for some reason, this map UV node, it wants you to have the blue up all the way. Like if I was to search for a mix node and I'm just gonna drop that in there. If I turn the blue down on here, and now I add a multiply. We're actually we're getting absolutely nothing now. But if I turn the blue up, you'll see it start to fade in. I don't know why this particular map UV requires blue to be on, but it does. But the, now we know that we can like record the UV map in one scene and the image in another and map them together, which is not something we necessarily want to do, but I'm actually finding it quite useful at the moment. I also used it in a ASCII art generator about a month ago.
Active Shift Black.